You can't be two things. Oh, contraire, man, Fred. Tell that to the bullfrog, the chicken hawk, or turtle dove. He's never gonna let up on you. It'll be easier on all of us if you just go with it. There was an idiom in that previous clip. I hope that you heard it. These videos are all about idiomatic phrases. Hello, my name is Dakota, and if you've ever walked out of an English class thinking, hey, I'm beginning to really understand English only to be totally frustrated when you sat down and watched an American movie. You may have understood most of the words being spoken, but you couldn't understand the meaning. Having a clear understanding of English is so important, whether it's being used in school, social situations, or in your professional life. English has become the common world language and regardless of why you're trying to learn it, it is essential that you understand the true meaning of what is being said. To do so, you must understand idioms and phrasal verbs. This is why I'm making these videos. So sit back and relax and let's learn about idioms and phrasal verbs. Let's take a look at our first phrase. The name of this phrase is, patch things up. The meaning of this phrase is, to try to improve a relationship after there has been problems. An example of this phrase is, my boyfriend and I had been having problems, so I went to see him to try to patch things up. However, things only got worse. The girl is saying that after she went to see her boyfriend to try to resolve their problems, things only got worse. And just to summarize, patch things up means to try to resolve a problem in order to improve or repair a relationship. Excellent. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Well, apparently Chandler's angry at us for not getting him a ticket to that Knicks game a couple of weeks ago. Oh, we're supposed to just get him a ticket? That guy is always mooching off of us. Yeah. Anyway, I, I still think we should try to patch things up, you know, like uh, maybe we could get him tickets to another Knicks game. And Here, Ross is telling Joey that their friend, Chandler, is angry at them. Ross then tells Joey that he wants to try to patch things up with Chandler. Ross is saying that he would like to do something to repair their relationship with Chandler. Yay, people! All right, here she comes. Oh, hello, Joanne. Billy, what are you doing here? He's here because he loves you and he wants to patch things up. Hey, how come you ain't got- Here, Peter is talking with Billy, a dolphin. Billy is having problems with his wife and Peter is trying to help him patch things up with her. Peter is trying to help Billy resolve the problems that he's having with his wife. What, what, what are you going to do? I bet if I talk to Carol and Susan, I could convince them to move to London with Ben. Yeah, I'm sure your ex-wife would be more than happy to move to another country so you can patch things up with your new wife. <laughs> Here. Ross is having problems with his new wife, Emily. Emily lives in London and he wants to try to convince his ex-wife to move to London so that he can resolve the conflict that he's having with Emily. Monica says sarcastically that she's sure his ex-wife would be happy to move to London so that he can patch things up with his new wife. Monica is actually saying that there's no way his ex-wife would move to London to help Ross repair his relationship with Emily. Great. Now let's look at our second phrase. The name of this phrase is, get it together, or, pull it together. The meaning of this phrase is, to act in a good and sensible way. To stop being emotional. An example of this phrase is, I've become lost in this forest and I'm scared and lonely. Wow. I really need to get it together. I need to think clearly. The boy is saying that he needs to stop being emotional and start thinking in a sensible way. And just to summarize, get it together means to get composed. To think clearly and stop acting irrationally. 
Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. I guess I am tired. Good night, Leonard. Oh, uh, sleep night. I mean, obviously, good night. I started to say sleep tight, and then I changed my mind in the middle. I swear to God, I'm smart. Get it together, ma'am. Here, Leonard is trying to impress a beautiful female scientist, but because he is nervous, he struggles to speak clearly. After obviously feeling very embarrassed, Sheldon tells him to get it together. Sheldon is telling Leonard to stop being foolish and start behaving sensibly. Anyway, all these years later, I still couldn't get Helen Hunt out of my mind. I was going nuts thinking about her. Oh, Helen. Oh, come on, get it together. Think of something else. Think of anything besides Helen Hunt. Here. A man has been trapped on a deserted island for years, and all he can think about is one woman. He feels confused and upset. He tells himself to, get it together. The man is telling himself to stop acting foolishly, and stop focusing on this woman. I like to consider myself a love expert. <sighs> get it together. Control it. Don't feel. Don't feel. Don't feel. Here, Elsa is struggling with her powers. She is convinced that when she starts having feelings for someone, she causes them harm. In this scene, Elsa is very emotional and she tells herself to get it together. Elsa is telling herself to control her feelings and start behaving sensibly. Fantastic. Let's continue on with our third phrase. The name of this phrase is, cool off. The meaning of this phrase is, to stop being angry, to become quiet and calm. An example of this phrase is, my husband and I had an argument, and after things became loud, I decided to come in here and take a bath so that I could cool off. The woman is saying that after having a loud argument with her husband, she decided to take a bath so that she could relax and calm down. And just to summarize, cool off means to be less angry. To calm down. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. You're, you're, you're making this too hard. Oh, I'm, I'm making this too hard. Okay, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I don't know. Look, oh, maybe we should just take a break. You're right. Let's, uh, let's take a break. Let's cool off, okay? Let's get some frozen yogurt or something. Here, Rachel and Ross are having an argument and Rachel says that maybe they should take a break. Ross thinks that Rachel wants to simply stop talking about the problem for a while. He says that this is a good idea and that they both should, cool off. Ross is saying that they should both stop arguing and instead, go out for some ice cream to try to be calm and relaxed. Okay, let me tell you something. This is now my house too. If I want to talk on the phone, I'm going to talk on the phone. What's wrong with you? Don't you nag me, woman. <laughs> Where are you going? I am going to take a drive and, and cool off. Here, Alan is angry with his girlfriend and their kids. After talking about his feelings, he says that he's going to go for a drive in his car so that he can cool off. Alan is saying that he will go for a drive so that he can relax and calm down. This is so unfair. Ooh. Now cool off, hotshot. Please don't leave me in here, sir. I can't stand small places anywhere but here. Jeez, kid. You're like 13 years old. Here, Astro is being locked in a room by a robot. As the robot is doing this, Astro acts very worried and anxious. The robot then puts Astro in the room and tells him to cool off. The robot is telling Astro to relax and calm down.
So we've now finished three phrases. What do you think? Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Great work. We're now going to discuss our fourth phrase. The name of this phrase is, heads up. The meaning of this phrase is, to alert someone of something. An example of this phrase is, I'm away from the office now, but I'm hearing rumors that there are major changes being made. I'm going to ask my good friend to give me a heads up if there are any changes that affect me. The man is saying that he wants his friend to notify him of any important changes happening at their company. And just to summarize, heads up means to notify or warn someone of something. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Fine, I'll go over there tomorrow. Thank you. I should probably give you a heads up about his mother. What about her? She's a delightful woman. You will love her. Here, Leonard is trying to convince Penny to go and talk to their friend, Howard. After Penny agrees, Leonard says that he probably should give her a heads up about Howard's mother. Leonard is saying that he probably should alert Penny about Howard's strange mother. All right, working with my best friend. This is going to be sweet. Just a heads up, I chew ice all day long and my computer goes bonk every three seconds. I hope that doesn't bother you. Here, Peter is happy to be able to work in the same office with his best friend, Cleveland. However, he wants to give his friend a heads up about some of his work habits. Peter is saying that he wants to alert Cleveland about some habits that he has when working in this office. And don't tell Berta she was here. Fine. Just give me a heads up when you're lying. I'm always lying. I'll give you a heads up when I'm not. Here, Charlie is dating a woman that his housekeeper does not like. Charlie lied to the housekeeper and said that he would no longer date the woman. But he was lying. Alan asks Charlie to give him a heads up when he tells a lie. Charlie says that he always lies and that he will give him a heads up when he is not lying. Alan is asking Charlie to alert him when he is lying, and Charlie tells Alan that he will alert him when he is not lying. That's terrific. We're now going to look at our fifth phrase. The name of this phrase is, hook up with. The meaning of this phrase is, when two or more people meet and form a relationship. An example of this phrase is, I went on a vacation to Mexico and I hooked up with this really handsome boy from Spain. We dated the entire summer. The girl is saying that she met a handsome boy while she was vacationing in Mexico. And just to summarize, hook up with means to meet, or begin to work with, someone, or other people. Excellent. Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. It's not going to be exactly like last time. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have an audition, but I'll definitely hook up with you later. Where are you going to be around noon? Here, Chandler and Ross are having a serious conversation, and when Joey says that he is leaving, the other men ask why. Joey says that he has an audition, but will hook up with them later. Joey is saying that he has to go to an audition, but that he will meet his friends later in the day. You guys go on. We're gonna walk home. Great call, H. Walking's the best. 
I really want to hook up with Homer. Now, we both know that ain't gonna happen, but... Here, after Homer says that he wants to walk home with his wife, an older woman tells one of Homer's friends that she was hoping to hook up with Homer. The older woman is telling the man that she wants to have an intimate, possibly sexual, relationship with Homer. Tell him who you originally wanted to hook up with that night. What? 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 <laughs> who did you originally want to hook up with? Okay, fine, but please don't be upset. Here, after talking about the night Chandler and Monica first started dating, Phoebe tells Monica to explain to everyone who she originally wanted to hook up with that night. Everyone is shocked and Chandler repeats the same question to Monica. Phoebe and Chandler are asking Monica who she originally wanted to have a sexual relationship with on that particular night. All of us here at TD English hope that you're enjoying these videos, but we need your help. The YouTube algorithm doesn't really support us because we are a young channel. If you enjoyed these videos, please spread the word by copying the link to this video to Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, or any other form of social media that you use. We need our community of English learners to work together to allow us to produce more of this content. We also want to thank all of you for subscribing and helping us. It is greatly appreciated. You're doing great. Let's look at our sixth phrase. The name of this phrase is, go with it. The meaning of this phrase is, to agree with something even if you think that it is wrong. To reluctantly accept something. An example of this phrase is, I went shopping for furniture with my wife and she selected all the furniture. I just kind of go with it, though I don't always agree with her choices. This means that the man may not always agree with his wife's choices, but he accepts it anyway. And just to summarize, go with it means to accept something being said or done, even if you don't agree with it. Great! Now let's look at some video clips for examples of this phrase. You can't be two things. Oh, contraire, Manfred. Tell that to the bullfrog, the chicken hawk, or turtle dove. He's never gonna let up on you. It'll be easier on all of us if you just go with it. Here, Manny is frustrated with his girlfriend because even though she is a mammoth, she thinks that she is a possum. Manny thinks that she should know that she can't be two things. Sid starts arguing with Manny about this. Soon after, Diego tells Manny, just go with it, so that Sid will stop talking. Diego is telling Manny that he should act like he agrees with Sid, so that Sid will stop arguing. This isn't gonna be good for either of them. Lois, let me ask you something. What's the best case scenario for someone like Meg? Dying alone in a lighthouse? Maybe Bruce changed. And, and either way, Meg's happy for once. I say we go with it. Here, Lois and Peter are arguing about the man that Meg has decided to marry. Even though Peter can understand why Lois is upset, he thinks that they should go with it. Peter is saying that Meg has historically had trouble making friends and that since she has started a relationship with her boyfriend, she seems happy and that they should accept what Meg has decided. Mimi, this is Sue. Oh, actually, I'm Blue. Aren't we all? <laughs> oh, uh, no, really, that's my that's name. That's why they call us Blue Macaws. <laughs> Just go with it. <sighs> Here, Blue is meeting Jewel's parents for the first time. After Jewel's mother gets confused with Blue's name, Jewel tells Blue to just go with it. Jewel is telling Blue just to accept what her mother is saying because... Trying to explain the truth to her will only add to her confusion.
Okay, we've come to our last phrase. The name of this phrase is, in the end. The meaning of this phrase is, after a long time. Finally. An example of this phrase is, although my boyfriend and I have broken up many times, in the end, we got married. The woman is saying that even though she and her boyfriend have had many problems, after everything that has occurred, they eventually got married. And just to summarize, in the end is the final result in a series of events. Great! Now let's look at some video clips for examples of this phrase. <laughs> Hello, hairballs. You may have won today, Bolt. But in the end, we will get your little penny. Not likely, cat. Here, Bolt is talking to a couple of cats. They tell him that although he won the battle today, in the end, they will get Penny. The cats are saying that after everything is concluded, the cats will capture Bolt's owner, Penny. I didn't just go after it. I had it. And a clear escape route. But... All I saw in the end was the tricky fox that they always told me I was. Here, Diane is telling Wolf that as she was about to steal the golden dolphin, she saw that, in the end, she had become the tricky fox that people predicted she would be. Diane is saying that after she worked hard to achieve her goals, she could see that after all her work, she had become the tricky fox that people predicted she would become. No, nah, it's fine. I'm well shot of him. He said I was getting fat. I beg your pardon? He said no one's gonna fancy a girl with thighs the size of big tree trunks. Not a nice guy, actually. In the end. Here, Natalie is talking with the Prime Minister of England. She is telling him that her previous boyfriend had broken up with her because he thought she was fat. She says that he was not a nice guy, in the end. Natalie is saying that after really getting to know her boyfriend, she eventually learned that he was not a nice man. Congratulations, you've completed the video. I hope that you will now understand these phrases when you hear them in the future.